fast, and this could be an overnight fast for 12 hours, or this can be a 24 to 36 hour fast, a one to two day fast, or one and a half day fast. When you fast and insulin drops, the first thing that is gonna happen is insulin makes the body hold on to sodium. And so what will happen is once insulin falls, your body will release some sodium and that will cause water to go with it. And so you'll lose water. And you'll lose a significant amount of water. And many people love this because it's, this has been a fad type of thing in the diet world because people say, hey, lose 10 pounds in 10 days. And partly what they do is go very low calorie and reduce insulin to such an extent that you shed a bunch of water. And you also burn through a bunch of your glycogen stores, which also make you hold on to water. Glycogen stored in liver and muscle tissue is sort of like a sponge. It holds about three times its weight in water. So when you decrease insulin, you decrease uh, water or sodium rather. Your body gets rid of sodium, which then you get rid of water. And you also burn through your glycogen stores, which makes you get rid of more water. So you get a really big drop in water pretty quickly when you fast. This can happen overnight for some people or it can happen uh, longer for others. That's the first thing that happens there. The other thing that can happen when you fast, obviously, is we talked about it, cortisol can rise and ghrelin can rise. And both of these can trigger hunger, energy, and cravings. But ghrelin in particular does something that can be pretty nasty for some people. Ghrelin turns on certain genetic things that happen. They, it actually, if you want to know the technical term, it increases lipoprotein lipase messenger RNA. What in the world does that mean? Lipoprotein lipase is the number one fat storing enzyme in the body and messenger RNA is the genetic component that actually makes our proteins. So what exactly does ghrelin do is it actually makes you more likely to store fat once you end your fast. And so you have to be very aware of this ghrelin effect. Uh, ghrelin also, you know, think about ghrelin growling in the stomach. It even sounds like a stomach growl. That is what ghrelin does. So for some people, short-term fast can result in long-term weight gain. And you have to be aware of that. It makes you more efficient fat storer in the long run. Now this is not necessarily, necessarily true for everybody. One of the other things fasting does that can be very beneficial is it can turn on human growth hormone, which opposes the action of cortisol. And perhaps this is what opposes both cortisol and ghrelin. So maybe what may be going on here is certain genetic individuals may get more of a human growth hormone response from fasting, while others may get more of a cortisol response to fasting. And that may determine whether fasting is good for them or not. Let's get into some of the fasting protocols. There are three major fasting protocols, and the first one is our favorite, and this is called a night fast. And here's the interesting thing about fasting. There, intermittent fasting or alternate day fasting, alternate day fasting is one of the most popular ways of doing fasting, and it consists of 24 hours with food and 24 hours without food. Well, the night fast does the same thing. It gives you equal time with food and equal time without food. So this is usually anywhere from a 12 hour fast. It could be a little shorter for some people, so maybe it's 10 hours, and it could be a little longer for others. It could be 14 or even 16 hours fast here. And most of the fast happens at night, and that's part of the benefit. Because while you're sleeping, you're not going to be aware of cravings and things like that. So this fast will normally occur. Most people will have their last meal by 8 p.m. And then they will not eat again till 8 a.m., which would be a 12-hour fast, 10 a.m., which would be a 14-hour fast, or 12 p.m., which would be a 16-hour fast. And then they consume all their meals between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., or 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., or 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. And so what happens is while they're eating, they eat every two hours or so, but then they have this long period of time without food. And many individuals can make this a very sustainable lifestyle. Many individuals can make this a very sustainable lifestyle. So this is the type of fast that we normally like to do. 
I like this fast because most people can handle it just fine, especially the 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. fast, and they do very well in their fast loss results. So that is the first fast and the one I recommend everyone start with. Now, the second type of fast is a fast that we call the modified fast. And basically what this is is uh, a longer fast, first of all. And it can last anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. And normally it's going to be between 24 to 36 hours. A day to a day and a half. So the way this works is you might start, you might have your last meal at 8 p.m., right? And then you don't eat the whole rest of the next day until the following day at a.m., 8 a.m. And so you have a whole day in between here where you essentially are going, you know, this first 12 hours and then another 12 hours and that would be your 24 hour fast. Now, one of the things that we do here is because this is so long without food, there are a lot of foods and research has shown that you can do this in a modified way and give non-calorie foods, things like celery, things like cucumbers or pickles, things like branch chain amino acid supplements, or greens and reds drinks. Basically, food-based items that have zero calories or very low calories. So these are things that you can make you feel like you're eating. Herbal teas, black coffee, things like that to stave off fiber supplements are another one to stave off some of the hunger, energy, and craving responses so it's tolerable. And some people get very good results here. So the way they would do this is they would say, I'm gonna fast one day, so I'm going to go, uh, you know, 8 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m., 24 hours, or I'm going to go 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., something more like a 36-hour fast, or I'm going to go 8 p.m. and then 48 hours later eat again. And then they'll take a period of time where they're on that and do it again. Some of these fasts will just be one to three days during the week or one day during a week, perhaps on a Sunday someone will do a fast, or sometimes people do them one day on, one day off. But they're modified because you can use some of these non-food items to help. And that can be a very good uh, lifestyle for some people. Most people, though, cannot do this as a lifestyle. So you might say, well, when would you use a modified type fast? If you're looking to lose those last little bit of fat and you want to take it to the next level, this is something you can look for. But remember, you have to watch out for the cortisol and ghrelin effect and see if this is going to work for you. Now, the final type of fast that we do is called the daylight fast. So this is the third type of fast. And essentially, what this means, this is very similar. Some of the research on this comes from those who do Ramadan fasting in the Muslim world. And basically what they will do, and this protocol involves, is it involves no food during the day and then one meal at night. Now you have to be careful here because how do you know whether this is going to be good for you? Some people do this naturally. Some very big obese people do this naturally, right? How many people do you know that skip breakfast, have a little tiny lunch, get home at 5 p.m. and then eat from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. then crash on the bed and go into an insulin coma all night because they ate so much junk that night. Watch and see if you're someone who can get to 7 p.m., 6 p.m. in the evening when, when it's dark and have a large but sensible meal, this may actually work for you. This is also known popularly as the warrior diet. So there's a whole diet based on this whole concept because hunter-gatherer societies tended to eat this way. They tended to, you know, basically maybe snack just a tiny bit during the day, but basically eat nothing during the day because they were hunting and gathering food and then have one big meal at night. This is another one. So the three fasts that can be very helpful for people are the nighttime fast, 
the modified fast, and the daylight fast. And all these are below here for you in the protocol section. Be careful with fasting because many, many people who do fasting regimes actually end up fatter in the long run because it was not a useful lifestyle factor for them. So if you're going to do fasting, make sure it's a useful lifestyle for you and make sure you're tracking hunger, energy, and cravings and keep it in mind the cortisol effect and the human growth hormone effect. You will know pretty quickly if you're hanging out to your muscle and burning fat whether fasting is good for you or not.